So good morning, I'm Claire Mitchell. I'm an advanced public health practitioner in the Worcestershire Public Health team. My um, main background is in commissioning, but I've been involved in some SDP-wide work streams, one of them being smoking in pregnancy, which is where I've been mainly linking with Louise, who'll be presenting with me today. So I'll be looking at some of the... What's that, sorry? Oh, thank you. I'll be looking at some of the data around smoking in pregnancy, both nationally and locally, and the trends, some of the um, risks of smoking in pregnancy, the evidence behind what we need to be doing to improve smoking in pregnancy rates, and then I'll be passing over to Louise to look at some of the things we've been doing locally and that we've got um, happening coming up soon as well. So first of all, looking at the general population data in terms of smoking, so in 2017, 14.7% of adults were smoking in Worcestershire compared to 14.9% nationally. So we are slightly below the national average in terms of general smoking rates. But what's slightly worrying is the trend. So you can see from the graph that the black line is the national trend. So it's coming down slowly, gradually. Um, but the Worcestershire trend seems to go up and down slightly. So the since 2015-16, our smoking rates have been increasing in Worcestershire, which isn't in line with the national trend, so that's slightly more worrying. And we do have particular pockets in Worcestershire of high levels of smoking within certain populations, so this has been increasing in the last couple of years as well, which is concerning, but nearly a third of routine and manual workers smoke in Worcestershire. Uh, looking at the smoking in pregnancy data, so in Worcestershire in 2017-18, around 14.5% of pregnant women were smoking at booking and 12.5% were smoking at the time of delivery. So that's around 800 at booking and 650 at delivery. If we look at the national data, 10.8% of mothers were recorded as smokers at the time of delivery according to the Public Health Outcomes Framework data. So we are, across the LMS, our percentage smoking at delivery is significantly higher than the national average. Um, and as we've already mentioned, the LMS plan identifies reducing smoking in pregnancy as one of its priorities and it's committed to walking, working towards the national target of reducing smoking at delivery rates to 6% by 2022. And I'll have a look, um, I'll have a, look a bit later at where we are with that trajectory. So again, looking at the trends, it follows a similar pattern to the general smoking trend in the way that the black line on the graph is showing the national trend with smoking at delivery rates. Um, and Worcestershire, since 15-16, seemed to have um, increased slightly. Um, the table is looking at the count as well as the percentage. So as you can see, our rates were declining um, to 12.9% to 10.8%. Sorry, and then in the last couple of years, they've been increasing which doesn't reflect the national trend so it's something we really need to focus on in Worcestershire. The NHS digital data gives us quarterly um, more up-to-date data like has been mentioned in one of the previous presentations. Um, so the quarter three data came out a couple of weeks ago which is showing 10.5 percent as the national figure for smoking at time of delivery and the um, figure for last year was 10.8, so that has come down slightly. So the quarter two data was the same as quarter three, it was both 10.5. Um, and like the previous presentation looked at, our CCGs have quite a lot of variation with YFRS being the highest, 14.1%, um, and South Worcestershire being the lowest at 10.6% in quarter three. And looking at the national picture, um, only 33%, 33 out of the 195 CCGs nationally are currently meeting the 6% or less target. Just to give you a bit of idea of the variation, some of the central London CCGs, I think there are two or three that are below 2%. That's some of the lowest rates. Um, the highest rate currently is Blackpool with, um, I think it's just over 27%, so it ranges from 2 to 27. Um, there's quite a lot of difference in the range, but there are quite a few CCGs that are under the 2%, generally around central London, but um, I think it's my next slide. So, yep, here we're looking at where we are in terms of that target locally. So the blue line, the solid blue line is looking at our rates recently and the dotted blue line is looking at if we were to continue on with our current trend where would our data be by 2022 
and it will be about 7.8% if we carry on as we are, which, as you can see, isn't meeting the 6% target. The red dotted line is where we need to be. So we do need to look at some significant transformation in Worcestershire to, to meet that 6% target, but um, there is lots that has happened and there's lots that is hopefully going on in the next year or so which is going to work towards that. So looking now at um, some of the data around the risks associated with smoking in pregnancy, which I'm sure isn't um, kind of new information to anyone, but we'll just look at some of the data. So smoking in pregnancy causes up to 2,200 premature births, 5,000 miscarriages and 300 perinatal deaths every year can be attributed to smoking in pregnancy. As well as the risks in pregnancy such as premature birth and low birth weight, there are risks to the, the health of the child as they develop in later life. So problems associated with the ear, nose and throat and respiratory conditions are higher in smoking in pregnancies and obesity rates and high levels of diabetes are associated with smoking in pregnancy. Smoking is considered the single most important modifiable risk factor in pregnancy, um, but it is modifiable. There is, it is something we can change, and like some risk factors, so it's something that um, we can make a difference with. It does account for 1 in, short, one in 12 premature births and 20% of low, ba- low birth weight term babies. Um, are associated with smoking, 1 in 14 preterm related deaths and 1 in 3 sudden infant unexplained deaths in infants can be linked to smoking and pregnancy as well. Um, So the statistics are quite concerning but hopefully ones that we can bring down. Also there are risks associated with secondhand smoke which I think is less spoken about and less discussed with families. Um, So as well as the mother we need to be obviously speaking with her about her, the risks that are associated with her own smoking, but if even if the mum doesn't smoke, but if a partner's smoking, then we need to be having this conversation as well. So this table looks at the risks linked to maternal smoking. So just to pick out a, f- a few, an average of 250 grams lighter um, in smoking mums, 24 to 32% more likely to miscarriage, and three, per- three times more likely to experience sudden infant death. Looking at the secondhand smoke exposure, Um, So there's still an effect um, with the weight, 30 to 40 grams lighter on average, an increased risk of stillbirth, preterm birth and heart defects and they're still 45% more likely to experience sudden infant death. So that's even if the mother is smoking but just a a household member. (coughs) Also, as well as the effects of the secondhand smoke on the child, if we are to support partners and family members to give up smoking, Uh, The data suggests that pregnant women are 67% more likely to quit smoking if their significant other also quits smoking. So as well as the the benefits it can have around the risks for the secondhand smoke, it can hopefully also support the pregnant women to give up smoking. So supporting household members to quit is what we're looking at in uh, the new service, which Louise will touch on more later um, for that reason. So what does the evidence say that we need to do to reduce and tackle smoking in pregnancy. We need to identify and refer all women who smoke to cessation support. So it's really key at that point of booking when we find out that women are smoking to refer all women on. So we do have an opt-out pathway in Worcestershire. So all women that um, are above four on the scale are referred on and it's an opt-out system. So it's not the case that they are offered support if they want it, they would opt out if they don't want it. Um, and we need to really focus on that and increase the rates that are being referred. Um, all of them are CO screened. There's a really strong evidence base for that, which is something that's happening in Worcestershire, which is great. Um, and that brief intervention at the time of booking is really key. When we find out that a woman is smoking, the, the conversation that we first have with them to discuss options around referral and, and the risks, um, it's, it's really key that we do that well. And, key that we can upskill staff members to have the confidence and the information to do that um, because it can be quite a tricky conversation. Um, We need to ensure there's sufficient expertise within smoking cessation support to meet the needs of pregnant women. Um, The gold standard for smoking support is behavioural and pharmacological support with NRT, so we'll be talking a bit about our current and future services. We need to ensure that smoking cessation training is undertaken by all health professionals to ensure there's effective communication with women and their families. So we need to really take a MEC approach, so making every contact count and making sure that 
all contacts that the health professionals are having at all stages of the pregnancy are involved in that conversation around smoking, but not just with the woman, with their families and if their families are smoking too. And making sure there's effective communication between health professionals, um, between health professionals seeing the women and the services that are supporting the women, which is hopefully what we're going to achieve in the new service that we're bringing in-house. In we need to ensure the pathways are implementing nice guidelines. Um, and the other thing that's quite supported in the literature is the Baby Clear programme and the RPI, Risk Perception Intervention, which is delivered by midwifery. And that's going to be touched on slightly in the um, slide that Louise will be delivering. So just to look at a couple of things we're doing in Worcestershire. So we've had a smoking and pregnancy task and finish group, which is STP-wide. So we've been working in, with Herefordshire to look at our wider smoking system. As part of that, we used a PHE tool to do a deep dive to look at the strengths and weaknesses of the system. And out of that, we've developed a local smoking and pregnancy action plan. There's a new smoking and pregnancy pathway that I believe will be, um, will be launched soon within the Trust. And that kind of involves the various elements, such as the risk perception intervention, the new maternity stop smoking service, which we are bringing in-house to the midwifery team, and also supporting household members to quit through the new maternity service that we'll be developing. So I'll just touch slightly on the current service, and then I'll be passing over to Louise to look at the new service that we're developing with the Trust. So the current model, over the last couple of years, we've had a smoking contract in place, and there have been two main providers. So people may have um, heard of them or referred to them. We, we did have a face-to-face -face service delivered by Quit51 and a telephone service which was delivered by Solutions for Health. Around 12 months ago, the Quit51 contract they had to pull out, so we haven't had face-to-face -face support for the last 12 months. Um, it's just been the telephone support um, delivered by Solutions for Health. Um, so they deliver support over the phone and they post out an RT to pregnant women. The, the main issue with this setup at the moment is that it's delivered in isolation from the maternity team. It's, it's a national telephone support service, so they're not kind of um, that joined up with what's happening locally and they're obviously not working directly with the maternity team. So when people drop out the pathway or they're not taking up their referrals, there isn't that communication loop back to support the women back into the service. At the moment, the data shows that 43% of pregnant smokers are accepting a smoking referral at booking. So that's something that we really want to increase as well, whether that's um, kind of looking at our brief intervention, looking at the opt-out pathway and strengthening that. Um, but that's a key part of the pathway we need to look at, because if people aren't coming into the service, there's various stages that they'll drop out at, um, such as setting a quit date and the four week, 12 week quit. So if we can get more in, then hopefully that will support the, the data. But um, generally there's a quick snapshot of the current solutions for health data. So it, it's not brilliant and there are lots of things we need to do to, to try and improve those outcomes. And we're hoping that the, the new service that we're funding to sit within the midwifery team will hopefully support those outcomes further. So I'll pass you over to Louise. Hello everyone, I'm Louise uh, Turbot, one of the matrons for maternity. Um, I've been working really closely with public health to try and get our service for women in Worcestershire right. Um, we have got lots of things going on behind the scenes. Uh, we're looking at new smoking advisors to be employed. So we're looking at band threes across all three sites. Co previously we did it on community setting, they're now going to sit in the hubs. So um, very soon to be launched are the three band threes. Um, they're going to sit with the risk perception midwives and really help um, support the family. Um, they're going to be based at Kidderminster, Worcester and Redditch sites. And they're going to go out to the, the family's homes and support them. Um, they're going to be working closely and have better communication with the midwives and the smoking advisors. And ensure a, a more joint up pathway that those women can be supported and have that one to one face value that then is needed. And we can see from the evidence that it, you know, it shows how well it works. Um, the difference they're going to do now is directly supply NRT. Public Health are supplying the NRT and we're going to be delivering, they're going to be able to give that to the women and their families because we know with that support and the advising, and that will hopefully achieve what we want it to do. Um, so, yeah, and also supporting household members. Okay, so the pathways um, in Worcestershire have recently changed. We just recently launched the new guideline. So we're going to offer all CO screening at first contact um, and refer 
uh, appropriately. So at the moment, Solutions for Health is still going, and we're going to continue with Solutions for Health alongside the new service. Because if women don't want to, to um, go onto that pathway, that they have got that option to have telephone advice as well. So um, they're going to be referred to a consultant and booked in for serial growth scans. So what we've changed, as it said earlier, we're currently we're at seven and now we've gone up to four um, millimoles per million. Um, so women who are registered that and above will be referred and booked onto the dating scan clinics. Um, what that currently happens is when they book at the moment, um, they, um, that when they're screened the notes, so they're identified as a smoker, then they'll go straight on to see the risk perception midwife. Now, they don't know they're coming to see that risk perception midwife. They come, they arrive, they have the dating scan, and then they go and see the risk perception midwife afterwards. It's quite a powerful message that the risk perception midwives deliver, um, and it's supposed to be hard-hitting and, and to really have some effect at Worcester at the moment we've got the system there, the CO monitor is linked to the computer so that the women can blow into the CO and it shows on the screen the effects that's having to the baby so hopefully we'll get that rolled out to the other sites as well. So uh, the risk perception clinics are again based at all three sites um, and they've all attended the baby clear training um, and they run alongside the dating scans I've just said and they're seen following, they're counselled and those that have declined uh, are offered further counselling and offered refer uh, further counselling at each contact as well. So it's continually feeding that message back. So, but hopefully with the new MSW support roles, we're going to have both of these effects, which is really going to have um, make a difference. Um, and as Baby Saving Lives version two, as we've heard, they will be screened at every contact. We're currently auditing this at the moment, but I think with Badgenet, we'll be doing every every contact rather than the one at 36 weeks. Part of our quality improvement as well is that we um, check for CO monitoring readings as well. So what are we doing? These are new posters. These are coming out into Worcestershire. So we've developed these within house. Um, we're just about to launch these throughout. So really informational for all the clinic settings um, and wherever we can get them to, to be a little bit more uh, with a new poster campaign. Um, so more factual, you can't see them very well on there, but when they're blown up, it's quite in, in a lot of information for the women to take in. So um, the slideshow um, is going to be, we've launched, just waiting for the Trust to go live with their links again. So all the videos will be on loop screens across the whole Trust. We're trying to get a family to take ownership of this, not just about the woman. So to really get them to understand, so antenatal areas, but they're going to be across the whole hospital. So I don't know if it's going to work on the loop, because we had a problem with it um, linking on. I don't know if it's on there. Oh yeah, it's going to work. So this is the video. I need some music. So. Background it. Okay, so that's it. Just a bit poignant, really, but those are going to be playing throughout the hospital. Is there any questions? It will be on the YouTube once we've launched it. It's gone through um, governance and um, comms have agreed it now. So, yeah, we'll link it onto YouTube so we'll be able to get it that way. And what was the significance of the child? It was just to sort of be a bit hard hitting into the future. You oh. know, it c can have an effect continually. Well, you know. Is there anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.